Hello and welcome to Sunday Night Conversations. I am your host, Michael Patrick Rooney. Sunday Night Conversations brought to you by D1 Baseball and presented by our good friends at Netting Pros. Netting Pros specializes in the design, fabrication, and installation of custom netting and padding for college baseball programs all across the country. Next time your field or facility needs something new, whether that be netting, wall padding, L screens, or ball carts, make sure you check out our friends at Netting Pros. Hey, these guys love our sport. They have amazing products. They really, really care. Um, we are so pleased, once again, third straight year, that Netty Pros is the presenting sponsor for, for these Sunday night conversations. Hey, if you've not tuned in before, we are just talking baseball. We're talking college baseball specifically. A couple years ago, we spent the, the whole year, the whole fall, talking to volunteer coaches in college baseball. It's a great way to get to know those guys that work so hard behind the scenes. Now, there is, you know, we don't have volunteer coaches anymore, which is awesome. Last year, we, we did more thematic stuff. We, you know, did hitting and pitching and catching and those types of things. And this year's just been really fun. Uh, I've just kind of picked topics that I'm curious about, that things that strike me. And, you know, that's why we've got Ryan Fulmer of ORU, of Oral Roberts here tonight, because... You know, if you follow college baseball last season, you saw Coach Fulmer's team go to Omaha as a four seed, which that's the only that's only the third time uh, in college baseball history that a four seed in this format, which we've had since 1999, has gone to Omaha. So wh why is that a big deal? Because remember, 64 team field, if you're a four seed, the selection committee is basically saying you're team number 49 or below. Now, we know that, you know, the seeding things um, get a little wonky in college baseball, and uh, a lot of it is geographic. And you know, obviously, for you guys, Coach Fulmer, you're you're you wouldn't be the four seed if there wasn't a Stillwater Regional, right? Like it, <laughs> proximity has a lot to do with it. But still, hey, the four seeds that have gone all hey, only four only eight four seeds have ever even won a regional before, and you guys are one of them. The three that went to Omaha were ORU last year, um, also Stony Brook in 2012 when they won that Super Regional at LSU. And then, you know, who could forget Fresno State in 2008? Um, they they go, the, I think it was the Long Beach Regional they won, then they won an incredible Super Regional at Arizona State, and then they win the whole dang thing at, at Rosenblatt. So, Coach Fulmer, I am so pumped to have you. It was so fun watching your club last year. So here's here's my thought for tonight. I want to do the origin story of Coach Fulmer. I want to talk talk about Pennsylvania. Any chance I get, I want to okay. talk about. I want to put some context to ORU baseball because sure. it is it is an incredible tradition. Uh, you guys making your run last year wasn't just like this out of nowhere type of thing. Um, I want to talk a lot about last year, and then and then we can fast forward a little bit to the the future. So um, it's great to have you. So you're from Chambersburg, PA. Tell me about Chambersburg, PA. Well, Chambersburg, PA, it's a small town in south central Pennsylvania, right, uh, kind of right in the middle of Amish country. Uh, fortunate enough, uh, uh, grew up there. A lot, I have a lot of family that's still in the area, so I uh, love to be able to go back home, but what a great place to grow up. Now, and when you grew up in Chambersburg, this is going to hurt my heart, but let's just, we got to deal in truth. <laughs> you right. guys probably grow up more like Baltimore sports fans, DC sports fans than like Philly or Pittsburgh or New York. Is that fair? Well, I, I would say that's fair, except in our house, you know, we're big Steeler fans. Ooh. So yeah, a lot of Steeler fans. And and my grandfather was a big Pittsburgh pirate fan. So oh, mostly, wow. you know, we kind of gravitated towards the Pittsburgh side of it uh, a, a little bit more. But as you said, you know, I grew up about three hours east of Philadelphia, about three hours west uh, or excuse me, three hours east of Pittsburgh, three hours west of Philadelphia, but only about an hour and a half north of the Baltimore, D.C. area. So, uh, you know, a lot of the man, we're right in the middle of a lot of really good sports towns, but we kind of gravitated towards towards the Pittsburgh side of it. That's really cool. The um, and then we're we're so it's interesting. I when I did Google Chambersburg, even though I, I know where it is, and uh, I didn't realize the Brook. I forgot. I should say the Brookins family is from sure. there. So yeah. and and you know American Legion baseball is such a big deal in Pennsylvania. You know it was. Uh, was that was American Legion baseball a big deal where where you grew up? Yeah, no question. It was it was a big deal. And as you said, you know uh, the Brookins, you know big baseball family back in Chambersburg. Nellie Fox would be the old timer. No That's way. That's a pretty famous old timer too. So uh, really good baseball community. Again, we were fortunate enough to 
to play for a historic coach that coached at Chambersburg High School for 55 years. No way. 55. I didn't Who's get that, that wrong. What's his name? 55 years. Bob Thomas oh was my gosh. his name. And yeah, Coach Thomas was there for a long time and um, had, had a lot of great teams. He was a great coach. So, uh, you know, we were fortunate to be in a really good baseball community. Was uh, when where you like Chambersburg High was of the guys sports was baseball the sport or was it football because it's a big high school right doesn't it draw from yeah. a lot of r- r- other areas big big high school uh, really good football really good baseball both my dad was actually the head high school football coach there for a long time 25, 30 years something like that before he became the athletic director so we all played football uh, for my dad as well so. Uh, it was a it was a great small rural community, uh, a lot of a lot of farm farm kids, a lot of inner city kids. We had a good mix uh, of a little bit of everything, man. But it was a great place to grow up and compete. Um, I was a three sport athlete. I know that's not very common anymore, but it seemed like most of the kids at that time were at least dual sport athletes. We had a bunch of them yeah. uh, that were three sport athletes as well. But fortunate enough to grow up in a in a place where. The sporting community was important. Uh, the town supported it, uh, and we had some really good teams too. I think uh, I want to. I want to say my junior year. I want to say my junior year in high school, we were ranked, I think, third in the country, maybe. And one of my younger brothers played on a team that was actually ranked number one in the country for a little while too. So, really good small town baseball community. Oh, that's awesome. What uh, what position did you play in football? And did you did you play for your dad or he had become the athletic director by the time you got there? I uh, I played for him. I was the quarterback. So uh, I'm the oldest of five, four boys and, and my sister's the youngest. And all four of us actually got a chance to play for him. I was a quarterback. Then another brother that played kind of the slot wide receiver, linebacker, another brother that played quarterback for him and another brother that was kind of a slot receiver safety kind of thing. So yeah, we all had a, had an opportunity to play for him. Very, very unique, very cool though. And again, uh, oldest of five, all four boys are in the coaching uh, community as well. So oh, that's cool. uh, my next brother in line is the head coach at Kutztown University, coaches baseball at Kutztown University. Oh, so cool. I have another brother that coaches college football. He's kind of been all over the place, been a head coach at the division two level, has coached at Lehigh, is now the offensive coordinator uh, at Elon. And then uh, my youngest brother actually is now the head baseball coach at the high school that we played at right after, uh, again, our coach that, that retired after 55 years after he stepped down. One of my brothers took that program over as well. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. That is yeah. so cool. Uh, it's the Chambersburg High Trojans, right? Is yep. that, that right? That's really cool. Yep. What are our colors? What, what are we what are we donning? We Trojans? are navy and white. So I haven't I haven't had to change a whole lot. <laughs> Penn State, right. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Hey, so, okay. So now we, so you, you, I didn't realize that your guys' high school teams were so famous or, you know, that, that had done so well. So is that how, so you, you go from Chambersburg PA to Oklahoma state and I don't want to portray Oklahoma state as like, this is a national program. Like Robin Ventura is from California. Pete and Cavillia is from California, but I always think of them going to California, not, Hey, Rob Walton is from Jersey. Right. So I guess it's always been a national program. But Tom Holiday, who I think was probably the recruiting coordinator at the time, is a Pennsylvania guy. But I feel like he's Western PA. Is that is TH how you got to Oklahoma State? Yeah, absolutely. And at that time, too, Runes, we had probably, I want to say, over my four years in, in Stillwater, we probably had, I'm going to say, 15 players from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York oh, wow. area. Uh, and as you said, you know, TH is from Uniontown, Western Pennsylvania, right outside of Pittsburgh. So, uh, yeah, that was the connection. And again, at that time we had a, we had a bunch of guys from that part of the world. And, um, uh, my freshman year, my roommate was from New Jersey. So it was very familiar and kind of easy to fit in. Cause at that time, you know, again, we had a bunch of guys from that part of the country there. And so, so was it all four of your years, your Gary Ward is your head coach. So, uh, three and a half actually. So, okay. uh, the, the winter, of my senior years when coach decided to step down and, and, and TH took over, took over at that point. So three and a half years was spent with coach, coach Ward. 
Oh man, one of my all time favorite. I mean, Thank just you. that whole, yeah, like that whole Oklahoma State tree, like the holidays, you know, like you and I were talking before we hit record. Like to me, the holidays are the first family of American baseball right now. Like it just, you know, three generations of incredible achievement. But but let's talk about Coach Ward for a second. So you come in, um, what was your position? You were a hitter, obviously, but what were you a catcher? I was a catcher. Yeah, I was a catcher. And at that time, when I walked on campus in Stillwater, we had, uh, six catchers and I think five of us had been drafted the year before. So oh, wow. it was one of those eye opening experiences you walk into go, man, I better get, I better get hooked up. I better get ready to go. Cause this is uh, this is for real now. So, um, but you, you know, when I took my recruiting trip to, to Stillwater, it, uh, it, it just connected with me and especially coach Ward growing up in a, in a coaching household and a coaching background. And I had an idea at that time that it was something that I wanted to do. Uh, after I got done playing for me, uh, Coach Ward was a great fit and what he taught in the way that he taught and uh, um, the things they were doing at Stillwater at that time really appealed to me. So it was it was an easy decision for me, not only to play, but knowing that once I got done playing that that he was going to have a chance to provide me with what I wanted in terms of my career after baseball. That's awesome. Was um, I'm gonna we'll come back to Coach for uh, Coach uh, Ward in one second. So you were you mentioned Ryan, you were drafted out of high school. Did you, was there any consideration to signing a pro contract at high school, or you were pretty uh, set on Oklahoma State? Not really, not really. At that time, I, I, you know how it is, runes. I mean, when you grow up in in Pennsylvania, we don't we don't get to play as much, or at that time we didn't get to play as much as most of the kids in the country. So I didn't I didn't know that I was ready. Uh, I think you want to be ready and, you know, your ego kind of gets in there a little bit and you think you're ready. But I think deep down, I knew I probably wasn't ready to go at that time. And going to school was was the best thing that I ever did at that time. So very happy that I that I went to school. I think it's a great transition from, you know, amateur baseball into professional baseball. Those three or four years that guys get a chance to spend in college. So for me, it was invaluable. Mm, that's awesome. Uh, this this was so obviously a young high school coach uh, in the, you know, basically in the early to mid 90s. And, you know, Coach Ward was always on the he was such a great clinician, you know, like he, at the famous clinics, he'd always be there. And I was blown away by how technical he was. It's kind of like how sciencey baseball is now. And the old school version <laughs> part of my brain is like, man, how do kids digest this information? Although I think today's kid is today's players much more they have more aptitude for it than, than we probably did. But I, I like coach Ward was shocking to me because he was so charismatic, but he was so sciencey. Like it was like, I mean, we're breaking down body parts. It, 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 here's the question I've got for you as is, was there something that coach Ward taught in hitting that you, you know, digested as a player that still stays with you and the way you work with hitters? All of it. It's, it's <laughs> interesting. I, I had this conversation with somebody the other day and, you know, as you said, it's so different now the, the how we teach, but what we're teaching is the exact same as what I was taught 30 years ago. You know, it's the same stuff runs. We're doing the same drills. We're doing we're doing very similar concepts. The language is very similar to what to what I used in college as well. Uh, and as you said, Coach Ward was so far ahead of everybody, in my opinion, at that time. And with the, as you called it, sciencey part, uh, that now we're doing the exact same thing as we did then. We're talking the same way. Now we get a different way to measure it. We get a different way to teach it. But the things we're doing are exactly the same things that I did when I was in college. So absolutely. I mean, what a what an impactful time for me um, now in my career, looking back to that and how valuable that was. I, I just can't thank coach ever enough. I, every time I see him, I get a chance to to thank him and, and, and just know that he was so far ahead of his time in terms of what we're doing now. Yeah. And you know, like the, the Oklahoma state program is one of the historic brands in college baseball. And you know, you're there, Ryan, like at, like in the, in the heyday, like, like, you know, the eighties were the decade that really put it on the map in my opinion. And then, you know, it just kept going from there and, you know, you've got Gary Ward and you've got Tom Holiday and, and Coach Holiday's brother was on the staff too, right? Or he was had he already gone to scouting at that time? Yeah, he'd already gone to scouting at that time. And, and but Dave lives here in Tulsa in the Tulsa area now. Uh, get a chance to visit with Dave all the time. What a great baseball mind. Uh, when you talk about the Holiday family, you know D Dave is a huge part of that as well, and he's been in professional 
baseball now for, I think, going on 40 years. Mm. So uh, a guy that just, man, uh, to sit down and have those conversations with Dave was a big deal too. And and Dave gave me an opportunity out of college. Dave was the one that signed me to a oh, professional right. contract with the Rockies as well. So, you know, as, as you said, when Tom took over too, uh, I played my senior year for TH and then uh, a couple of years professionally and then went back to Stillwater. And as I'm finishing up my degree, you know, uh, TH hires me on staff and I work on his staff for five years too. So tied into the family big time. Josh and I were college teammates. Right. Uh, you were a senior. He well. was a freshman. Is that right? Like his freshman. Uh, I think my junior year, he was a freshman. So we got, oh, we got to got spend it. two years together too. Got so, it. Um, yeah, so in, super impactful time. And, and man, I, I've been lucky. I've been around a lot of great coaches too. Uh, you know, when you talk about Gary Ward and Tom Holiday and, and my dad and, and John Farrell and Robbie Wine, who came in on TH's staff. So, mm-hmm. uh, Rob Walton, who I worked under here for, for nine years. So, I've been lucky to be around some really, really good ones. That's awesome. Hey, uh, let's put a bow on the Oklahoma State part uh, here. So was it your senior year was the the team that made it to Omaha of your four teams? Uh, junior year. Junior year. Okay. Yeah, was that the best of the we four were... teams or was it just the team that no, made it? No, I think the best team uh, of those four years, let's see, my, my, my freshman year, we lose to a really good Cal State Fullerton team and a regional in Stillwater. Uh, Mark Kotze, Dante Powell, oh wow, and that whole group. Giambi was on that team. Jason Giambi it's was an on unfortunate that team. draw. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, or Jeremy Giambi was on Jeremy. That team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason really, really good team. Uh, but I think the best team was probably my sophomore year. We go to a regional in uh, in Knoxville with Todd Helton and the boys. Oh my gosh. R. A. Dickey and that in that group, um, and we end up losing the if necessary game. Uh, in the region. We lose the if necessary game to Fullerton. Uh, my freshman year, we lose the if necessary game to Tennessee. My sophomore year and my junior year, we go to uh, we go to Lubbock. We're in a regional Lubbock. And I don't know, man, they were 16 regionals back then. Yeah, I think USC was ranked number one in the country uh, at that time. And they had Jeff Jenkins and, you know, that whole group that was really, really good. They were ranked number one in the country. Texas Tech at that time was ranked number four in the country. Um, and we're in that regional. We were in the regional. Uh, Fresno State was in the regional with one of the Weaver brothers yep. uh, started game one of the regional. We ended up winning that regional. And then my senior year, we lose to a really good UCLA team in Stillwater that that was that was loaded up, too. So, uh, yeah. So we made it my junior year. That would have been ninety six. Awesome. Yeah. So, OK, so this this that was uh, that was good. So this so. Oklahoma State getting tough draws in the NCAA tournament. This is not a new development. This is a <laughs> this is a tradition. So right, we'll, right. yeah, that's funny. Okay, so you you spent your five years there after pro ball. You get your degree. You're doing baseball operations. Then you go to Oral Roberts. And again, like Oral Roberts, Larry Koshell coached there. Sonny Galloway had an incredible run there. You know, Rob yeah. Walton takes over. Um, you know, this is when uh, around you you. This is if I'm not mistaken, this will be your 21st year coming up at Oral Roberts because 2004 is your first year. You know, I wrote this down, 1998 to 2012, Oral Roberts goes to 15 straight regionals. And then I, you guys change conferences for just a couple years right in that area, right? Is that, do I have that right? We did. We, we transitioned into the Southland Conference, really good conference uh, at the time, and then transitioned back into the Summit League again. So we spent two years, two years in the Southland there, uh, 2013 and 14, maybe if, if, yep. if, uh, if that strikes me right. So yeah, uh, yeah, right during the transition is when I took over when Rob uh, when Rob left. So uh, was right in the middle. But as you said, man, I was very fortunate to work with Rob for nine years here too. What an incredible head coach he was here, and man, learned so much from him. And uh, man, yeah, it was a pretty good time. Yeah. So, so the, those Oral Roberts teams were incredible. You know, like you mentioned some of it, 15 straight regionals is incredible. I don't care what time period this is. And um, I mean, I, I've got, I got to coach against those teams. I have my opinions, but, but let me ask you, and you know, again, this is, I think it's before the summit became the summit. It was kind of called the mid continent before if, mm-hmm. if I, you know, who knows the, the timing there, but let me ask you, Ryan, like what was the secret sauce there? I have an opinion from the outside, but you know, you were right there in the middle of those 15 straight regionals. And it was just like, you could in February, you could write Oral Roberts in your NCAA tournament bracket, right? Like you, you just, yeah. they were going to be there. 
Um, and you didn't want to see him because those players were going to be used to regionals. But what and in 2006, you guys did win a regional um, in Fayetteville, uh, ironically took down Oklahoma State. But yeah, what from your perspective, what why was the program so strong at that point? Well, I, I think the secret sauce is always the same. It's players. Mm-hmm. I think you, you, you have to find a way to get good players. And we were able to get a, a, a bunch of really good players. I think at that time, you know, our recruiting base was junior college players from California. Yep. And uh, we were fortunate to be able to attract a bunch of really good junior college players out of the state of California. And, and man, we, we, we made it work. So the secret sauce was pretty easy. We had a lot of good, good players at that time. And, I, you know, Rob was a great developer, too. Uh, I think uh, a, a guy that understands how to get players better and not just limited to pitchers either. You know, he did a lot with our hitters at that time, too. So just a guy that did a lot to help develop players. So we got a lot of good players. I think we did a good job with our development at that time. And as you said, we gave a lot of people a lot of problems. Yeah, yeah, no no question about it. And I remember being on the West Coast, you know, like obviously at Arizona State, we were always very aware of the JUCO players in California. But, you know, like you've also got these high profile high school kids coming in. It's like you're but I, I always remember that feeling like you'd, you'd be you'd have a name of a Cali, Cali, Cali JUCO kid. And you're like, eh, I don't know, you're 50 50. And then I know you guys are in there and I'm like, oh, yeah, great. Like this kid gets Oral Roberts <laughs> and he is going to go four for three against us. Like this yeah. kid, there's no question will be. So anyway, that was that. Yeah, I, I, it's funny that you said that because that's like we always felt that way. Like, man, every year Oral Roberts is getting seven or eight really good California Juco yeah. players. I think, you know, as you know, Runes, at that time, the California junior college baseball was so good. I mean, you could go up and down the coast oh. and there's 89 schools in the state of California that uh, support junior college baseball and all of them seem to be really good. So we were, we were fortunate to be able to go out there and we spent a couple of weeks out there every fall and and ended up getting a, a lot of really good players up and down the coast. Uh, um, and, and again, for whatever reason, it, it worked when they got to Tulsa. Uh, I think we did, a, again, a good job in in recruiting. Obviously, there there's a lot of good players in that part of the world, but uh, Rob was so good with the development part of it too. I thought, I think we had a chance to make him better as well. And it's, and it seems to me, Ryan, like, like, you know, I'm going to, we're going to spend some time on the 2023 team, obviously, but you guys still continue in my opinion. Like I look at last year's team and there was some really big contributors that had Juco backgrounds. I, I guess my question is like, you know, when Pete back in the day, when we thought about Juco, we thought about plug and play, but you guys really had a different view of juco it was more like development it was like they're going to be here for two years how do you do that like if it's still less than three or four years how do you take a development mindset to a kid that you know is on the surface plug and play well you know i think you know it's a great question i don't don't know if i'm going to answer it very well either but uh, i think when you're talking about development it all comes down to what you think you're able to do for each and every kid. And it's very individualized and it's very specific. But I'll say this in general now, Runes, we, we get guys that are more skilled now by the time we get them than they've ever been. They're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger without question, but they're also more skilled than they've ever been. So when you talk about the development, I think that development curve, especially with technology, especially with the data, especially with the video that we have access to now, Man, it's all sped up. I mean, you can you can make that speed up in a hurry. Whereas you said it, it seemed like years ago it would take us a year or two years and maybe even three years sometimes really to develop a good player. I think you can speed that curve up right now. And I thought we did a good job of doing that. Uh, when we got those junior college players, we we're able to speed up that development process. Knowing a lot of times you had you had one year with them. You mm-hmm. know, if it was a really good junior college player, man, this is a one year deal. So there was zero time wasted. And what we're doing in terms of development, uh, we understood that part of it. We knew that part of it. So I think we adjusted how we taught, the way we taught to speed up the development process. Yeah. So, so okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about, about more about Oral Roberts baseball, and then we'll kind of fast forward to 2023. So, again, like I'm one of those people that have been there, got to coach there, you know, saw the crowd. Crowd was great. They were all over us. It was a Tuesday night. It was, it was a wonderful, <laughs> it was a wonderful experience except for the scoreboard. Right, um, right. Yeah. The, the great Michael Rogers, if you're out there and you're listening, God bless you. That he just, that's, that was <laughs> a slider. Lives in town here too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Slider from Hades that night. It was, it was, it was not what you anticipated on a Tuesday evening, 
that said, it was it was an awesome experience. You know, you guys were, you know, like like I I didn't mention those coaches' names: Larry Koshell, Sonny Galloway, Rob Walton, yourself. Like this was a really well coached program. You guys really had an identity in recruiting. Like you know, no, let's be fair. Nobody wanted to play you guys, and so you know, you have this great run of regionals. Then there's the Southland experiment. Um, you miss a couple regionals there. Then you guys come back to the summit, and the summit is kind of like this newer, sexier version of the Mid Continent, at least from the outside. You guys go to four straight regionals, and then there's this interesting blip. So you miss regionals in 2019, and you there's then 2020 is the pandemic, and then you miss regionals in 2021. Now we know in your conference you have to win a tournament to go to the, but you guys had just done it so much that it was almost like. It was shocking to see you guys not do that for a couple of years. And so then from the outside, we get all these assumptions. Oh, like a rising tide does lift all boats, right? Like, hey, North Dakota's really, North Dakota State's gotten really good. And Omaha's gotten really good. So, you know, from the outside, we, we don't get to see the summit as up close and personal as maybe I did when I was coaching. You know, we're starting to make all these assumptions. And then, you know, 2022, you guys are back. 2023, obviously, is this run. Now I get a chance to actually ask you, Ryan, like what, like when you missed those two regionals, 19 and 21, what was it? Was it the summit like really was surging? Was it you guys just got clipped in a tournament? Um, you know, I'd like to get your your uh, take on it. Well, I'll say this. Our league is better than it's ever been. Yeah. Uh, teams are better. They're, they're, they're better funded. The facilities are better. The coaches are better. The players are better. And as, as you know, since – uh, since the pandemic and the shortened draft and the portal and all the stuff that's going on now too, man, there are good players all over the place. And our league is no exception. There's a lot of really good players in our league. Um, so yeah, we, we hit a spell. And as you said, 2019, we lose the, the, if necessary game to a guy that beat us actually three times that year, Peyton Kenny at, at Omaha beat us three times in, oh, wow. in one season. We had a really good team too. We had a really good team. We saw the wrong guy on the wrong day, and, man, he clipped us three times in, in one season. Um, and then we lose an if-necessary game, and and as you said, in, in 21 as well. So, uh, yeah, our league is way better than it's ever been. Uh, there are better coaches. There are better players. There are better facilities, better funded. So uh, it continues to get better, and we're excited to be part of that. Yeah. Uh, as our league continues to grow and get better, and we've seen – uh, a new facility at Omaha pop up. And if you haven't been there, it's a beautiful Ooh, facility. Gorgeous. Yeah. North Dakota state plays in a, a independent league stadium in Fargo. That's a beautiful setup too. So our league continues to get better. Yep. That's yeah. No question about it. So, all right, so let's do 2023. This will be fun. So, you know, like it's an, it's interesting. I, it, to get ready for this, I looked at your guys schedule and, and tried to kind of walk myself through it. Um, at one point, you guys were 42 and four in that schedule. Like you, you had won 42 out of 46 games at one point. So, so what's, you know, you just dominate the summit league, right? Like you guys win the league by six and a half games. And um, it looked like you, you pretty much, you know, took care, like kind of housed everybody in the conference tournament. So you get, you get, you get sent to this regional and it's interesting because you're going to go to Stillwater, which was so obvious, right? The, 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 there was no element of surprise there. <laughs> you were 2-0 and against Oklahoma State in the regular season. However, you're also in a region with Dallas Baptist and Washington, who maybe the school's never even played before. But DBU was like the one blip on your regular season schedule. You guys, if I'm not mistaken, you had been swept at DBU very early in the year. So yeah. I would imagine when you guys got your draw, it's kind of like some mixed emotions because, hey, Oklahoma State, we feel like we match up really well with. Dallas Baptist was the one bad weekend we had. You know, there's always those teams, as you know, Runes, that you, for whatever reason you just play well against. Mm -hmm. And then there's other teams where you just, for whatever reason, don't play real well against. Well, as you said, that year, you know, Dallas Baptist, we, did, we didn't play real well against Dallas Baptist. And it's not just this year. It's been a couple of years. We haven't played very well against, against them. And for whatever reason, we've, we've played well uh, against Oklahoma state the last couple of years. Um, and as you said, oddly enough, both of them in the regional. So, uh, I, but I think that was good for us. You know, we were familiar with the ballpark we we're going to be playing in. It's mm -hmm. right down the road. We knew our fans were going to travel. Well, um, we were familiar with two of the three teams that we we're going to be seeing, uh, in the regional. So I think for our club going into that, it was, uh, it was a very calming feeling because the travel was going to be easy. It was going to be very familiar. We knew exactly what we were going to see. So, uh, I think our guys were really excited to get going that weekend. 
And then, of course, for the second year in a row, the Stillwater Regional is just chaotic because if I'm not mistaken, you guys take down Oklahoma State and Washington takes down DBU. What was that? What was that first game like, Ryan, as far as like, you know, look, you guys kind of commanded the game from the part I was watching, but it was not, you know, like it was not a blowout by any stretch. But from your perspective, what take me through that first game? Yeah, it was uh, we had a rain delay, too. So it was it was kind of strange to start, but. Great atmosphere, obviously a, a beautiful ballpark, great ballpark, and, and again, a really good team, too. As you said, it felt just like that back-and-forth game, really tight game. Again, we've played them so much over the years, and I think every game is about the same. It's just like that. Yeah. It's uh, it's tight. It's tight all the way through. Uh, you know there's going to be fireworks at the end, usually from both teams. So we're just waiting for them to make runs, and I think they were kind of waiting for us to make runs, and it was – it was back and forth and tight and but what a fun game! It was a, it was a great ballpark, great atmosphere, uh, tight game. I think those are those are the things that that stick out. That every regional game that you play in over there is going to be tight. You're mm-hmm. going to have to make plays. You're going to have to make pitches. People are going to make runs. You're gonna you're going to do something stupid, and for sure the ball is going to fly out of the yard at some point. Um, and and it was all of those things. It was a lot of fun though. So, so I should have asked this question before, but let me ask it now as we really dive into this. So you guys have been to a million regionals. You've been to a million regionals. Was there a time maybe in the fall or early in the spring where you felt like, hey, if this team does get to a regional, we're, we've brought a lot of good teams to regionals, but we might br- be bringing a little something extra this year to the postseason? Well, uh, I'll say this. You, t- you talked about uh, how consistent we were um, for much of the season. We were, man. We were as you said, I think 42 and six to end the year or something like that. We had a stretch in there where we won 21 straight. Uh, I think that one of the things, and and I've talked to this, uh, to this point several different times, I think the one thing that separated this team from most is was just how consistent it was over a long period of time. And in order to be that consistent, you have to be very, very balanced. And I think uh, that's the thing that stands out to me about this team was how balanced this team Mm. was. We knew early on in the fall that we had some talented players, uh, but a lot of them were new. We had 32 guys on our roster, 17 first-year players. Some of those guys out of the portal, some of those guys out of junior college ranks. We had one freshman on our roster, so we knew we had a little bit of experience too. Now, some of that experience was kind of untested, and we knew we were going to have to we we're going to have to play. They need more more than anything else. We thought needed to happen. We thought these guys needed to play together and go through some tough moments together to see how we reacted. So you talked about Dallas Baptist early in the year. We went down to Dallas Baptist and uh, did not play well that weekend, but we came out of that weekend surprisingly going, you know what? We have a chance. This is, this has a chance to be a really good team. We have to make some adjustments. We have to do some things a little bit differently. We had to shake the lineup a little bit. Um, and, and after that, man, we got on a run, and it was very, very consistent and consistent in all three phases. We were really good on the mound. I think we we're at the end of the year, we we're seventh nationally in ERA. We were really good offensively. We had a chance to score in a lot of different ways. I think we ended up seventh in the country in batting average. We had almost 100 home runs and almost 100 stolen bases. Uh, so very balanced offense. But what stands out to me the most about that team was how good we were defensively. Yeah. We led the country in fielding percentage, and we had defenders at all three levels that were uh, really, really good. So – Uh, I think as consistent as we were, that's the thing that really stands out to me about that run. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, I wrote that down. You guys fielded 984, like through almost 70 games. Like that's like, like just not making errors. It's like a ball's hit on the field and it's an out. It's really, you know, and all that stuff you mentioned. And I remember, you know, like, again, it's like, it was very easy as an outsider to fall asleep on you guys because you've been so good for so long. It's like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Or Roberts is in a regional. Of course they are. And, you know, we were, you know, I, I think I, I personally felt like Oklahoma state had a team last year that, you know, they always get better as the season goes on. I thought they had a team that could really make a run. They had some star yeah. power. And I remember watching that game that you played with the rain, you know, we were doing the squeeze play thing. And, you know, you see Jonah Cox for the first time. You're like, Whoa, okay like Mm -hmm. that's a different looking dude you know like that's yeah that's that's not an ordinary looking middle of the field athlete and then you hear about his hitting streak and all that stuff and then you know you see Kay Denton come out of the bullpen you're like holy heck like you know and I feel like 
he had a great year for you guys, obviously, and a great career. But I felt like the regional, at least for me, the regional was Kate Denton's coming out party. I think so, too. You know, he saved three games. He saved all three games in uh, in the regional. And, uh, and as you said, I think going into the season, uh, we thought the strength of our pitching staff was definitely going to be our bullpen. Obviously yeah. anchored by Cade at the end of games, but man, Jacob Widener, Dalton Pat, Patton, Caleb Isaacs, uh, Evan Kowalski. We had a we had a bullpen that had depth to our bullpen. I think that's a huge difference when you talk about um, not only going through a regular season the way we did, but once you get into tournament play, man, your bullpen is super super important. You've been able to get through it, and we felt like we had depth in the bullpen. And Cade was a guy that can. They can slam the door, uh, led the country in saves this year as a national closer of the year. Um, and we knew what we were getting every every time we handed them the ball. We knew what we were going to get. So a uh, really calming feeling. But there, there was no question. I think from a national perspective, that was his coming out party for sure. Oh, man. Yeah, it was incredible. Now, now, and as we continue to run in the postseason, one of the things I'm totally convinced of now is that, hey, if you're a team out there and you want to go to Omaha, we all do, right? And you want to have a deep postseason run, you've got to be good, no question about it. But but the fortitude you've got to have, like the ability, it reminds me, like the visual for me is you see these boxers training for a fight and there's part of their training where they flex their stomach and they have their people just punching them in the stomach. Like that's probably how we should train baseball teams figuratively we shouldn't punch them literally <laughs> but figuratively you know because it's like i so you yep. guys have this emotional win over oklahoma state you're now three and oh against them on the year and the next game you're playing washington and you're down eight to nothing in the second inning and it was just weird again i'm watching on tv so you, you're just taking guesses but you're down eight nothing ryan and your team looks just completely unbothered by it what what was it like from yeah like t talk to us about that 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 game against Washington where you're down eight nothing in like five seconds? Yeah, it wasn't much longer than five seconds either. It was you know the top of the second and it's it's eight to nothing. But as you said, I think uh, you know all year long we just had a uh, a calm, relaxed team that 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 was really mature about how they approached the game. We had extraordinary leadership uh, in our clubhouse. You know, Jake McMurray, Mac McCroskey, Kate Denton, um, you know, all those guys, Andrew Roach were our captains, and they just had this calming effect that, man, we are never out of um, – that were thrown at me throughout the season. The one that stuck out, stood out the most. The last seven games that we trailed by at least five runs or more, we won all seven of those games, if you can imagine that. And that was that was that was one of those you didn't know you if you were going to be able to recover, but we knew we had a long time. It's the top of the second, and we're down eight nothing, and it just took a spark. And Jacob Godman comes up, hits a solo home run, uh, I think in the third inning, and then from there, I think we proceeded to have twenty four hits. I think is what it was, and it, it and they just kept coming. Once it started, it was like a snowball effect, and and they just got rolling. But uh, our our internal leadership was so good that uh, that we didn't have to do a whole lot to motivate them, keep them calm. We just had to make sure the right nine guys were in the lineup uh, and give them a chance to go play. And uh, again, they went about their business really, really professionally. I don't know if I can say it any other word than there was zero panic. You know, mm -hmm. we knew we had a lot of time left. We knew we had a good team. We knew we could score. We knew we could score in a lot of different ways. And in that ballpark, too, and the way it was playing, it felt like it was going to take more than eight. It was just going to be a matter of time before we got back in it. And luckily, we were able to get back in it and kind of kind of run away a little bit. Mm, incredible. Yeah, the, the the all the things you mentioned about the uh, 2023 Golden Eagles of ORU, but but I, I, the part I can't get over is like the stone jaw. I mean, like the Golden Eagles could take a punch now, and there were more punches yeah. coming. Like it was there were a lot more punches. Yeah, coming. <laughs> I mean, like there was there was we were going to spend some time on the canvas, and we were going to get up, and we were going to win fights. I mean, just incredible. So so you come back and win that Washington game, 15 to 12, and then. Sure enough, who comes through the loser's bracket? But DBU, the team that swept you earlier. And it I, I don't have good feel for the game other than the score. It was a one-run game. But what do you remember about that game, uh, Fulms, as far as like winning that game and, and sealing the regional? Uh, every It seems like every time we play DBU, and Oklahoma State for that matter, every pitch is so big. It's every pitch. It's just, as you said, it's like a heavyweight fight, man. Every pitch is going to mean something. At some point, and that's what it felt like. It was back and forth. The momentum was back and forth. Uh, and again, that's a scary team, too, because you're talking about power arms and power bats all over the place. So the game can change so fast. And 
um, you know, again, we're able to hang in there and get to Cape Denton at the end with the lead. And we felt like if we were able to do that, man, we had a good opportunity to win. And as you said, a, a tight, close, contested game that, uh, that we were able to pull away and, and kind of win late. But, uh, yeah, it felt like a heavyweight fight. As you said, man, you just throw punches and you keep taking punches and, and hopefully you're standing at the end of it. And we were. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so now you guys have won the regional and it's the first time since, since 2006, 2006, I'm going to check my notes. You guys won the Fayetteville regional. Who did you guys go play in 2006? Who did you match up Clemson. with? Clemson. Oh, Clemson. Clemson. Okay. Yeah. Got we it. went to Clemson and, uh, it was, it was, they still show this highlight too. We were up three in the ninth against in the bottom of the ninth against Clemson and Tyler Colvin hits the grand slam mm-hmm. home run to win game one of the regional or the super regional in, uh, in Clemson that year. And actually we had a, uh, a late lead, a two run late lead and gave up another home run, I think in the seventh or eighth in game two to get beat too. So we had an opportunity to win that super regional as well. Gosh, and that's and so you, Rob Walton's the head coach. You're the assistant, and then that's Jack Leggett. Clem, this is that's yep. Clemson. That's heyday Clemson is what that yep. is. Um, yep. That's awesome. Hey, so now as as I perceive it, you guys wrapped up your regional before the Nashville regional. You know, like in theory, this was Oklahoma State and Vandy. Um, and you know, we're talking about that. Josh Holiday worked at Oklahoma or worked at Vandy before coming to o- OSU. So you did you guys win before? And now you're waiting to see who wins in Nashville. Oh man, it's all a blur, runes. I'm not. I'm not even real sure. I know the timing was pretty close, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm not real sure how the timing actually worked out. And it was funny too, because you know we're playing uh, the regional, obviously right down the road in Stillwater here, which is an hour and fifteen minutes from campus. So we get done. You know, we play the night game, and the championship game is the night game. Um, and we, our players decide, hey, coach, we're ready to go home. You know, so we actually go back to the hotel. I think we get back to the hotel around midnight. Everybody showers up. We packed up and and we left. Uh, we left that night too. So it was all kind of a kind of a blur as we're heading back to Tulsa, trying to get ready for the next day and and where we're going to head. I'm not real sure how that timing worked, but uh, I know by the time we got back here, we 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 had a pretty good idea where we were going. Incredible. So so Oregon wins that regional. They looked really impressive. Oregon had a really unique season. They had all these pitching injuries, all these young arms, um, really some dynamic position players. So you guys go to the Oregon, Oregon Super Regional, the Eugene Super Regional. It's really a tough one for us on the outside to get our arms around because obviously nobody really saw that matchup coming. But, you know, the atmosphere in Eugene was amazing. It's a beautiful park. I mean, they just they were it was packed with fans. It just looked like an electric environment. And and I want you to clean this up for me, Ryan. But what I recall is game one, you guys go out to this like really big lead. I think you're like might even be winning eight nothing again at some point, And you just can't get the, you can't get to Cade. Like I, I'm watching the game with you know trying to pretend that i'm running the game too and it's like you're trying to find that right spot for Cade, but it's also a three-game series you've just used them three times so you're you're trying to be economical with it and you just can't find the perfect spot and by the time you get them the ball it kind of had unwound on you but from your perspective yeah i that game looked wild well i'll just say this the atmosphere as you said was was wild we've been fortunate to play all over the country from coast to coast and uh, that's as tough an environment to go in there and play and, and try to win a series as I've ever been a part of. They did a great job with their atmosphere. Uh, their students were still uh, in class and on campus at the time. So uh, it was a madhouse. It was crazy. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun. But as you said, you know, as uh, we fall behind 8 nothing the, the week before, um, now we go up 8 nothing and we find a way, as you said, to, to kind of give it away and, and end up losing the game. And as you said, we just we couldn't get it to Denton. We couldn't get it to Kate in the right spot. We couldn't hang on. It was back and forth and uh, or not back and forth. We had jumped out and they just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. And, you know, as you said, we couldn't get it to them early enough and and end up giving it up. And, yeah, we, we blow an eight nothing lead and end up losing nine to eight in game one. Yeah, it's crazy because I just looked it up. You scored eight in the third. And again, like this is this super regional that nobody really knows we, we can't get our arms around it. Right. And then, and then, you know, we, it, it's on TV. And so we jump in there visually and the atmosphere jumps off the page. It's like, it is electric, like you said. And then you guys put up an eight spot in the third and it's like, Holy heck, what, what's going on? It's like, here we go again. And then, you know, the, the Oregon's clawing back. They had this really immensely tough team. I mean, obviously Mark Wasikowski's done an incredible job since taking over there. Um, and so, 
you know, you lose that game. And so for me, you're like, okay, now we're turning into a pumpkin, right? Like nobody can take a gut punch like that. No four seed can win a regional on the road, go on the road and literally win game one of a super regional, but not win it. And then, so in my mind, I'm like, okay, Hey, Oregon's going to Omaha. Like that's kind of a cool story too. And then, so, so I want you to take it from here. Like how the heck does your team take that gut punch? And then like a week later, you're in Omaha. I'm like, what, what just happened? Well, I, again, when you talk about mature teams and you talk about leadership in your clubhouse and how dynamic that can be, that's what it was. I mean, it, uh, you know, it's funny. You know, we talked about along the long streak and we had just we had won 21 straight up to that point. We had won 21 games in a row up to that point. And I think after the game, so I said something to the effect to our team as we all come up and we, you know, we blow this eight nothing lead and guys are, you know, upset and you know we're trying to figure out what we're going to do the the next game and and we got the team together i said well it's about time we lost one i mean it's been a long time since we lost and i think at that point everybody kind of relaxed and you know it's one it's one game you know we we had to win a series we didn't go up there to uh to win a game or to do anything other than to win a series and we still had an opportunity to win our a series so i think our team was uh very mature about it took it very professionally and uh and we knew we had the kind of team that was going to come out the next day and be ready to go and compete and fight. And, and that's what they did. They came out game two. And as you said, I, I, I think we fell behind in game two as oh, yeah. well. I think we fell I behind early four in the seventh, eighth and ninth. Yeah. And then just kind of kept coming, kept coming. And then we get a big, Justin Quinn gets a big hit in the, in the, uh, in the bottom of the ninth to, to win it. And we really felt like after that game, after we lose game one, the way we did after we win game two, the way that we won, Man, we felt really good going into day three. I mean, we felt like this was our opportunity to really do something special. The concerning thing for us was we had used Cade Denton up a bunch in game two. So we knew he mm -hmm. was not going to be available for game three at that point. Um, and as bad as he wanted the ball, there was there was no chance that we were going to give him the ball. We were trying to protect him. But at the same time, you know, we, we felt good about the guys that we had in our bullpen. We had depth to our bullpen. We knew we had depth to our bullpen. We felt comfortable with those guys. Uh, and man, they stepped up in a big moment. We we're able to score and kind of, kind of open the lead up enough to give you a little bit of breathing room and uh, and end up winning. Yeah, I mean, you just talk about like you guys doing this all like you, you take the the most winnable game in the world and lose it, and then you take these next two games in the super regional that are infinitely losable. I mean, you had to score. You, you were down in the seventh, eighth, and ninth in both games. Like in game two, you had to score four. In the seventh, eighth, and ninth. In game three, you had to score six. You scored three in the seventh and three in the ninth. I I think this was game three, but I'll have you correct me on this. I just remember like Cade Co or, or Jonah Cox. I'm, I'm putting the two together. Jonah Cox just became this like real lightning rod player, meaning like we were he was so captivating. That's the word I'm looking for. Where now you're we're paying attention to you guys, and you can't take your eyes off of Jonah Cox. He's like got the look, and he's. Like he's, he doesn't run. He bounces. He's like that kind of athlete. And I remember like he had some moments in, in that super regional that were tougher, you know, like, yeah. like, yeah. And, yeah. but I, I, I recall he had like a big home run to center field or something happened where you're like, man, like even when it's going bad for this kid, he impacts the game. Well, the, the inning before that, he had a play in center field that he kind of uh, right. he made an awkward attempt at a fly ball that didn't quite get to the wall that he felt like he should have caught that he doesn't, he doesn't make a play. And, you know, as you said, the, the Super Regional up to that point was kind of uh, – it was not great for him to that point, but he comes up his next at bat, hits a solo home run to center field, and really kind of sparks everything and gets it going. Comes up later in the game and gets an, another big base hit for us. So he's an electric guy. Uh, as you said, I think people that had an opportunity to see him play couldn't take their eyes off him just because it's, it's big, it's strong, it's physical, it can run. He's got power. He can do a little bit of everything, and he does it a uh, 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 hundred pence kind of way, right? Uh, plays hard, does all the little things. So, uh, yeah, he he was one of those guys that sparked us. As tough as it was up to that point, we knew we needed him to make a play, make a swing, make something happen, and, man, he did. He did yeah. in a big way. Do you remember any moments from, okay, now you've clinched the Super Regional, like you're, the dream is going to happen, like you're going to Omaha. Any moments from like the end of game three or the time in between winning that game and getting back to Tulsa and then going to Omaha? Like, what do you, what do you, yeah, what, any moments that stand out? 
man, they all kind of run together. I'll be honest. You know, you're, yeah. you're, you're in the moment and you want to enjoy it. You want to do all the things. And, and I think that where your mind shifts is okay. You know, what's next? Um, because again, we're, we're on the West coast. Um, this is on a Sunday, I believe. And we know we're leaving for Omaha now on a Wednesday. So the turnaround is going to be really fast and your mind just goes in supersonic mode and hey what do we need to get done by the time we get back to Tulsa how do we get this team prepared you know to give us an opportunity to to make a run at a national title now so uh you know i don't remember a whole lot it was great to be able to share with our fans that that made the trip to Oregon it was great to be able to share it with your family and friends and and all the people that have, that have been with you for a long time so i think those those things stand out but uh, man, your mind really shifts. You start thinking about what's next and how to prepare your team for for what's coming next. Awesome. And, and you know, of course, you guys being there in Omaha was so cool. Like it was th- this was an incredible Omaha because it was so star studded. Um, it had everything, uh, yeah. you know, it had everything you wanted from star power. And then you guys are playing the role of Cinderella. And then, you know, of course, like, of you know, of course your team would do this. You're down five to two in the ninth <laughs> against TCU. You haven't yeah. played well, right? Like you made an error in that game, which was really unusual for you guys. You had mm-hmm. walk six. You just, you do, you know, like, Hey, that's a big environment. It's, it's, that's a lot to handle for everybody. I don't care what role you're, you're, you're playing. And then you guys just didn't play great. And and so, you know, in your mind, you're kind of looking at like, man, what a season for Oral Roberts. It's a bummer that they, they didn't show more of who they really are. And then you're like, Next thing you know, you guys have scored this four spot. What do you remember about that ninth inning against TCU? It was the same, man. It was just the – I don't even know how to describe it really, Runes, but uh, our dugout was really calm and they were ready to go and knew we had – as long as we had an out left, we had an opportunity. As long as we had a strike left, we had an opportunity. And they just kept battling, kept battling, get a couple big hits, and then Blaze Brothers hits a hits a big home run. And uh, – I I, I think it stood out to me, not just that day, but all year long is just their fortitude, their toughness, uh, their resiliency and never out of a game, never out of any moment. No moment was ever too big. Never mo- No moment was ever too much. Um, they just hung in there and played hard all the time. And uh, I, I think teams that do that are a little bit scary because they're never out of it. It's never over. You have to really finish them. And fortunately, we we're able to make a big swing uh, that day. Yeah, just it's just incredible. Yeah, like it was the perfect, um, you know, like kind of one of the final punctuation marks for your team that just would, you know, like your to your point would not die. You know, like this team was just not going to go away. You know, it's so funny. One of our uh, one of our listeners, Vandy Chris, asked about Matt Hogan. You know, who had spent his life in the SEC, and this was very, you know, that th- it felt like a very SEC. Omaha and of course Wake Forest had this generational team and then Matt Matt Hogan just it, 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 I guess it was really cool to me to see for all of us to see Matt Hogan who struggled to find the right home for himself in college baseball go to your guys place and thrive and be such a vital part of what you guys accomplished yeah no doubt what a what a big year Matt he had and obviously a huge part to our success and our run uh, a guy that I, I think he ended the year maybe 330 something like that and, and hit 18 home runs and a lot of big hits, uh, had a big hit against Florida that the, the next game that we play had an inside the park home run, uh, against the university of Florida. So it's great to see him have a, have a great year. As you said, after he had struggled a little bit and kind of found a home here and man, he played well all year long for us. Awesome. Hey, so let, let's wrap with this. So, you know, like I think about the future. So, you know, like you go to Omaha and it's just so much buzz. And then our home state, Pennsylvania, Penn State, the Penn State job comes open and you are the obvious name, right? You're a Pennsylvania native and you're coming off this great run at Oral Roberts. Uh, but you're staying at Oral Roberts. You've signed an extension. Uh, I just read recently where you guys have got some really cool plans to update the facility, which I already, you know, again, I, as I said earlier, I got to coach there. It was fun. You know, it was a fun place. Um, yeah, we, 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 it, it's a cool facility. So, so let's talk about that, Ryan. What, tell sure. us about you staying, you extending and, and what your plans are for, for the facility. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, I think it uh, for me, it came down to a couple different things. I, I think, number one, we believe in the foundation of the university or you as a, a small private Christian institution here in Tulsa. And, and we believe in the foundation of the university. Uh, we believe in the vision of our athletic department. As you said, we have some stadium renovations coming that we're very, very excited about. 
we, we love the Tulsa community. We're dug into the community. Uh, and, and we think we have a chance to win and win at a high level. So uh, for all those reasons, we decided to stay here in Tulsa and couldn't be happier. Uh, and as you said, very excited. We get to start some stadium renovations here pretty soon. I think uh, with, with that kind of run, we're trying to capitalize on on the excitement around the program as much as we possibly can. And uh, man, we're excited about the future here. That's awesome. By the way, Kay Denton is listening. He put a comment in there. It says, hey, Mike, let Fulm know he's having a great interview. Ha ha. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kay Denton, we got to interview him in Omaha for Sirius XM. And what a sharp kid. Like just, I mean, not a kid. I, everybody feels like a kid to me now. But, you know, like just sharp, well-spoken, grateful. Um, and, and that's going to lead me to my next question. Like I think Kay Denton was a three-year development piece for you guys. You, sure. you know, he mentioned you know, that was the obvious question for us to him is like, hey, why are you at ORU? And, you know, you've you've uh, I said that on air many times, like at, at that point in the season, you could pull every coach in America, every SEC coach. I don't care what league they're in. Like, yeah, give me th- give me a couple of K Dentons at the end of the game. Like, heck, yeah, for that. Yeah. So no so what? So here's the question, Foams, like what can this happen again? Like, I think people are nervous, right? I'm nervous about the transfer portal and um, the way, you know, like not nervous for the health of the game necessarily, maybe a little bit. But like, like, can a, a run like Oral Roberts happen again? Can can you guys continue to build on the strength of your program? Obviously, you think the answer is yes, because, you, you know, you're staying. But why is that? Like, why are you confident that stuff like this that was so magical last year can keep happening? Well, you know, again, I think with the with the shortened draft, with the portal, I think good players are getting spread out. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it takes the the right year to get all those guys together. I think you have to you have to have certain moments where you get a little bit lucky. Right. And you get the right kind of guys on your campus. And ultimately, I believe it can happen because I think you can still develop. I think you can still develop player. There's a lot of good players out there. I think you, you have to find the right players that fit. Uh, your style. I, I think you have to find the right players that fit your program. Um, and I think you have to find the right players that are willing to work and develop. And I think if you find those guys, yeah, I think it's, I think it's possible. No question about it. I mean, Kate Denton's a great example of that. And I know Kate's listening to this too. And what a great story Kate was, you know, Kate was a walk on for us. I know he's, he shared this story, so I'm not scared to share it. Kate was a walk on for us who was 84 miles an hour here his freshman year. And by the time he left here, it was 96 miles an hour because he worked his tail off. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he dove in and, and, and was committed to the development process and, and made himself into a, a great player, made himself into a really good draft pick. And he's going to have an outstanding professional career. But I think for those reasons, that's why it is possible. Yeah, it's so awesome. You know, this was great, Ryan. I knew this. I, it always goes super fast. I knew I was so excited to talk to you about last year's team because it was so fun. And like my my guiding principle in college baseball right now is we can't punish the SEC for loving college baseball. We can't punish that league for being great at it. But but we can't ha- we, we can't have it be such that no one else is allowed to participate too, right? Like we need to, we need to thread that needle where the SEC gets to just love on our sport and grow our sport, but other really cool programs can thrive too. And you guys were that like last year's college world series with Oral Roberts in it was the perfect embodiment of what I personally want college baseball to be, which is where, Hey, the SEC can take us to places where we didn't think we could go, but also like great programs that have an identity that do it the right way, like an Oral Roberts can thrive. And so I, you know, I, I, it's just fun to talk to you publicly about it. It was, um, man, I, 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 this may sound a little corny, but I just think you and your team and your program, you guys did a lot for like the soul of college baseball last year and, and, and good on you. It, w- it was so great. So great. Well, Yeah. I appreciate that. And I think that's well said too, runes. I think everything that's happening in our game now uh, is great. I mean, what the sec is doing now, what the sec network is doing, what ESPN is doing for college baseball. Uh, we're growing the sport. I think it's everybody else's job to keep up, right? Yeah. It's not their fault for trying to make it bigger and better. Uh, everybody else has is, is, is got to work and, tr- and try to catch up. But I think also, too, and I, I, I'm going to say this uh, out loud, too, Runes, is guys like you make our game better, too. Mm. I mean, what you're doing with, with D1 Baseball and this podcast, and I'll tell this quick story. A couple of years ago, we asked Runes and uh, Kendall Rogers to kind of help us out. In a, right. uh, in a fundraiser. And you guys were kind enough to say yes. So I will forever be in debt to, to what you guys do. But 
man, I think there's so many people like you guys out there right now that are growing our game, that are good for our game. And I think the more exposure, the better. And it's going to be up to the rest of us to kind of keep up. So, uh, again, thank you. Thank Kendall for doing that for us, man. We're forever in debt for you. Thank you for what you're doing for college baseball as well. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, super fun. Yeah, it's it's. I think we all we all look at where the game was, you know, when we all started, and, and we look at it now, and we get chills, you know. And and yeah. I know I speak for Aaron and Joe Healy and Kendall when 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 I say that. So all the guys. But um, that's it. Really, this was great. Really appreciate it. Hey, for all the listeners, um, if you're watching us on YouTube, please hit subscribe. Um, if you type in Fall 20 uh, on the website, if now the fall reports are starting to come out, which are so fun, um, get yourself an annual subscription there. Uh, Want to say thanks to that's SEC Extra or D1Baseball.com. Thanks again to our friends at Netting Pros for making this possible. Uh, and that is it. Um, we will continue to do these fun, these fun conversations on Sunday nights through the, the end of the fall. Uh, everybody have a great week, and we will catch you next time on the D1 Baseball Podcast.